Hi everybody, I hope you're enjoying your first day of digital learning. I am going to teach you today's math lesson now and I have some ideas for how this might work for you. I'm going to go through the slideshow and the slideshow will be uploaded on the content section of our eClass page under cross math and it is called measurement. So you could have the video open in one window and the slideshow open in another and just listen to me as you click through the slides or you could watch me talk the slides through and then pause the video and go back through the slides on your own. You can also always go back and look at the slides anytime you're working um, throughout the week and you have questions or you don't remember anything, just go back to the slides um, to review. So this week we're going to be working with measurement and if you remember a few months ago we talked about how as we got closer to the end of the year and milestones time would be getting short and now here we are learning at home, who knew? Um, but I'm so glad we introduced this unit back when we did because hopefully most of it will be a review. Now we are going to take it a little bit farther this time. We're going to convert between different units. We're going to solve word problems with different types of measurement, but at least we have learned all of the units and all of the types of measurement. So um, there are a lot of learning targets for math this week. I don't want you to panic about that because I'm going to teach them to you more than one at a time and you won't even realize that you're learning more than one of our learning targets at the same time. So I'm going to start going through the slides. You can again watch me do this and have the slides to look at later or you can open your slides on top of the window with the video so you can listen to me while you look at the slides. You can also watch me and pause Go to the slideshow back and forth, whichever makes the most sense for you. But when you see me looking over here, I'm looking over at the slides so I know exactly what to be telling you. Okay, so our learning targets for the week. We are going to be working on saying I can describe different units of measurement and explain what they're used to measure. So if you remember, we're going to measure uh, mass, volume, or capacity, length. We're even going to do some time and money, which we didn't do when we introduced this a few months ago. Um, some of the units that we're going to be talking about are kilometer, meter, centimeter, gram, kilogram, pound, ounce. We're even going to talk about tons a little bit in your MovieMax work today. Um, liters and milliliters, hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, and that's it. So once we have learned all these measures, you're going to learn how to convert back and forth between measurements within the same system. Remember, there's two different systems of measurement, and I'm going to talk about that each day. Um, but for example, within mass in the metric system, you're going to be able to convert between grams and kilograms, or liters and milliliters for volume. All right, also I can understand the relationship between gallons, cups, quarts, and pints. Those are our liquid uh, volume or capacity measures. You're going to be able to express larger units in terms of smaller units. This is what I just mentioned with converting. So you might take something that's in kilograms and turn it into grams or something in ounces and turn it into pounds. Um, you're going to be able to record measurement equivalents in a two column table. I'm going to model this for you and show you how you can uh, create a data table that'll help you convert between different types of measurement. And then the last thing is we're going to use all the different operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to solve word problems using the things we've measured. So distances, um, masses, amounts of time that have passed, any of those things. And we're going to work through those each day as we go through the slides. So I have updated these slides a little bit from the last time we did them, including new estimation 180s. So what I was thinking you could do today is click on the estimation 180 and go ahead and get yourself a journal or a notebook that you can work on, take notes, show your work throughout the week as you solve problems and you can do your own estimating there. So after you click on the estimation 180, I would take a few minutes to think through some fun estimates, maybe three like we do in class, that are way too big and then three 
that are, oops, normally, to, is that right? Yeah, big first. And then three that are way too small, or if I said that backwards, do it the other way. I, I don't know. Um, and then three estimates that you think could be correct. So I'm going to suggest that maybe you click on the estimation 180 in the slides. You can pause the video and take as much time as you need to work through the estimation 180 and hopefully it doesn't make you guys too hungry. So go ahead and pause me, do the estimation 180 and then come right back. Okay, so hopefully you were not too surprised or too far off with your estimates about cheese balls today. Um, and we are gonna look at cheese balls for the rest of the week. So now I'm going to start on the mini lesson slides. Um, and we're gonna start with remembering what is mass? Mass is the amount of matter in an object. We usually think of this as weight, how much something weighs. And there are several different units that we use when we measure mass. Before we talk about that, we've got to talk about the two systems of measurement. If you remember, there are two systems that are used throughout the world. The first is called the metric system, and almost everywhere in the world, except for the United States, uses the metric system. The system we use here in the United States is called the customary system. So we're going to learn some units in each system for each type of measurement that we're talking about. So today, mass. And we're going to start talking about mass being measured in the metric system. Now the base unit, the smallest unit that we use for measuring mass is a gram. And if you remember, we estimate, or I'm sorry, abbreviate this with just a lowercase g. So when you're solving problems using grams, you might write some lowercase g's. Oh, there's George. George wants to learn math today with you guys. Um, so we think about a gram as about the same as the mass of one paper clip. So paper clips are pretty light, they don't weigh very much. So we want to think about using grams to measure things whose mass is not that great. Um, things that are not very heavy. So maybe you can think of some things that you might use grams to measure. Now, if you remember in the metric system, it's pretty easy to go back and forth between different units because they are based on a system of a thousand. And if you remember, kilo, K-I-L-O, means 1,000. So 1,000 grams make up one kilogram. So a kilogram is a whole bunch of grams. It's a lot heavier, it has a lot more mass than a gram. And a kilogram has a mass of about one dictionary. If you remember, some of us, uh, maybe in third grade, held a dictionary, one of those really heavy books, and you felt that that was about what a kilogram feels like. So if we're measuring in kilograms, the things we're measuring are going to have more mass, they're going to be heavier. And when we write kilograms, we abbreviate or make it shorter by writing a lowercase kg. Okay, so now let's talk about the customary system. Now this is the way we measure mass in the United States. These are the units you're going to probably be more familiar with. So where we use the gram in the metric system, we use ounces in the customary system. So an ounce is similar to a gram, about as much as a paperclip. Now again, we would use ounces to measure things that have less mass, that are lighter. Um, when we think about heavier objects, we measure those in pounds. So when you go to the doctor for your checkup every year, they probably tell you how many pounds and then ounces, or if, when a baby is born, they measure their mass in pounds and ounces. So when Shelby was born, she weighed six pounds and 10 ounces. Okay, so this is what we have not done already. This is gonna be a little bit new. Um, we're gonna solve some problems involving mass. And as we do this, we're gonna record the things on the chart. You can see behind me, I've already started our chart up here. And we're going to talk through different conversions of different units as we go through the week. So, this problem that we're going to look at is going to have to do with mass, and it's going to have to do with the metric system, okay? So the problem says, Ms. Cross is shopping for groceries. She wants to make roasted vegetables for Sunday dinner. This is Mr. Elliot's favorite thing to eat um, on Sunday dinner. So... 
I went to the store and bought 340 grams of potatoes, 560 grams of sweet potatoes, and 280 grams of carrots. The question says, how many kilograms of vegetables did I buy? But if you look at the problem, everything is listed in grams. So we're going to have to do at least two steps to figure this out. So I'm going to slide the camera over a little bit. And I'm going to use my pretend marker board back here. We'll see if you can see me. Yes. Okay. So I've gone ahead and filled in the chart. We have 340 grams of potatoes, 560 grams of sweet potatoes, and 280 grams of carrots. And... If we think about the problem, how many gram, or how many kilograms did I buy in all? When we hear that in all, we should think of which operation? I'm thinking of addition. So the first thing I'm going to do is add up all of these masses in grams, okay? And if you want to do this on some scratch paper and your journal to do it along with me and be sure I don't make a mistake, you should do that now. So I didn't line this up very nicely, but I do want to add my ones. Place first and I have all zeros. Now my tens, I have a four and a six, which is 10, and an eight, which makes 18. So I put an eight here and I carry my one. So now I have three plus five, which is eight, plus two, which is 10, and then I've got to care, add that one that I carried. So I have 11. So if I pull my measure, my unit down grams, I know that I have 1,180 grams of vegetables. But the question asked us how many kilograms do we have? So if you remember, one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. Okay? So one kilogram equals 1,000 grams. So if we think about this for a minute, we have 1,180 grams. Well, that 1,000 grams is the same as a kilogram, okay? So this is going to be one, we're going to bring our decimal friend back, one and 18 hundredths of a kilogram, okay? So we're kind of just replacing the comma here with the period, and we're changing this into a decimal, one and 18 hundredths of a kilogram. All right, so you now can rewatch the video if you need to. You can re-go through the slides if you need to. And if you go to your digital learning day one math column, you will see your instructions for today. You're going to go into MobyMax, and there are a few things that I've already assigned you to do. You're going to be looking at some of these measures and doing a little bit of converting with metric units for maths. I will be able to see your work and I will be able to tell if there's anything I need to reassign and help you with so that you can get it a little better. If you have any questions, send me a message on Dojo. I hope you guys are having a great day. I miss you. I'll see you soon. Bye.